Hello, everyone. I am so excited for our first Tuesday at two, where I am going to uncover different B2B marketing strategies and tactics. But today it is all about relationship building. I strongly believe that relationship building is the new marketing. And when I started to think about this topic, I thought about a show I used to watch years ago, Cheers. I don't know if any of you have ever watched that show before, but I just loved it. You know, that theme song where everybody knows your name. You know, don't we all just love it if we go someplace where people know us? You go to a restaurant and they know who you are. And they'll say, oh, Mrs. Peterson, would you like to sit over here? And they might know what I like to eat or what I like to drink. Or if anyone knows me, it's really what dessert. Come on, let's cut to the chase. What dessert is on the menu? Matter of fact, I recently had an apple tart. Oh, it was to die for. But that's another conversation all in itself. But we all just love it when people know us. I have a nursery that's close by. And every time I go into the nursery, the owner comes up to me and she's like, oh, Donna, how are you doing? And she'll ask me about the kids. How's Haley? How's Jack? And, you know, that's just so nice. It's just a warming feeling that you get inside when you're there in her store. And then over the years, she knows what I like. So she can direct me in the right direction to a gift that she knows I would like to give someone. And that extra caring that she shows is why every time I need a plant or a gift, that's where I go. I don't even think about going anyplace else because one, I enjoy my visit there and she always puts me in the right direction of the gift that I would want. So I love it. We all know that emotion drives our purchasing decisions but also our decision-making skills. Just like I just said from this nursery, nursery example, because she knows me, it's that warm, cozy, comfort feeling of going there and that kind of meeting up with a friend who then directs me on what to purchase. But why do individuals pick one product over another? How do you develop brand loyalty? And also, how can you ingre increase engagement from an individual or get them from being unengaged for be to being engaged? Now, there's a professor at Harvard, Gerald Zaltzman, who answers the question and he says it's all because of our subconscious mind. Now, he wrote a book. Now, I'm going to read the title here so I don't get it wrong. How Customers Think, Essential Insights into the mind of the market. Zaltman goes on to say that what people think and feel contradicts what they say. So he wants you to dive in and get that bond with the individual that will change their emotion versus just selling. And I'm a big proponent on that. You know, I'll say to my clients all the time, educate. Give them information. Let them make the decision on whether they need your product or service. Not that you go, oh, I've got the best product. You have to order it. If you want to do it, you've got to buy this now. That's not what you want to do. So marketing is all about now building that relationship. Gone are those days of those mass promotions out to everyone with hopes that you get sales. Because the thing is, you might get a sale. But what you want to do here is you want to get that individual in who will buy from you year after year. And that's when the relationship forms. You need to promote the value of your product versus the product itself. So, for instance, in the B2B space, will it save them time? Will it save them money? Will it create a new revenue stream for them? You know, think about what they're thinking about. And, you know, later on, we're going to be talking about more about knowing your audience and understanding them. But if you know the job title of the individual you're going after, you'll be able to figure out how to position that messaging. For instance, if you're going to a CFO, 
the content or information you send a CFO is going to be different than the content you send a CEO. A CFO wants to hear about the numbers. They want to know what the savings is. They want to know bottom line, what is this going to do for them? Is it going to increase the sales by how much? Where your CEO, they are looking at more that larger picture. So the information you send them is different. So you have to know who you're talking to so that you can highlight those emotions in them to attract them to your company, but then to get them to buy from you year after year. Now, World Innovators recently, you know, our company was founded 41 years ago. And the mission we had then is different than now. The mission back then, because remember it was before the internet, was to find quality direct mail lists for B2B companies all over the world. And that was a great mission back then because there weren't a lot of list companies out there offering that service. But as marketing evolved, so did our company so that the mission changed. And now the mission is to inspire, educate, and nurture businesses to build valuable relationships that will stand the test of time. And why this mission is so important to us now is because we truly care what people are doing. And there is definitely a way to do marketing correctly with quality channels and sources that will only enhance their brand, not tarnish their brand or get them hit with penalties, or get them blacklisted. And so we got to be talking about quality. But what this will do with our services is not only save them time and money, yes, but it'll give them that peace of mind. And so this is where we were getting in to know our audience. You know, business owners, they have so much on their mind. I know because I'm a business owner also, but you have so much going on up here. It, it's like, uh, and if someone told me they could give me peace of mind, I'd be like, sign me up. I want peace of mind. <laughs> you know? I'll do it. I'll do it. And so you have to be understanding them and thinking what goes through their heads. And when you're able to do that, that's when you're able to create the content they need to see. So like I said, it's all about relationship building and becoming familiar with the people who would most be interested in your product and services. So what you need to do is you need to sit down and think about first the basic demographics. Your basic demographics being your title and industry, maybe what revenue, what employee size, geography. Is it in Texas only? Is it all of U.S.? Or is it worldwide? You know, you got to think about these things because, you know, that's another thing to think about. How you might talk to someone here in the United States is totally different on how you're going to talk to someone who's over in the UK. So they all have different things on their mind. And this is where you have to dig in to those basic demographics to find out about that audience so that you will know who you're talking to. But then you have to understand them. And what I mean by understanding them is, you know, do your research. You can check social media. You can look on Google. You can, you know, you can even read just various articles or go to conferences. And you can see what are the hot topics they're talking about so that you understand them. So, for instance, if you're doing something in the pharmaceutical space, especially like when COVID hit, you know, pharmaceutical industry was booming because everyone was working on something for the vaccine or to keep people's hands clean, you know? So those industries were looking for quick things on how to produce, how to, you know, supply chain, how to get the products out and going. So that was just being in tune with that industry. What were their demands right then? And then giving them content to fill that demand. And so if you understand them by knowing, do they need a specific piece of equipment? Do they need education? You know, are they in a profession where they've got to do educational credits each year? Do they have a specific challenge? Like, if, is there something going on in their industry that they have to be aware of? 
You know, when I do um, promotions with, you know, executive education program, they might be running a program on crisis management. And so if something comes up in the news, that becomes a hot topic or program. So then we have to put that into the content of the marketing piece. Maybe it's helpful tips on crisis management. And if you'd like to learn more, maybe you sign up for the course. Something like that. And I say, you know, the more you give, you'll get more in response. And so give out that educational material. Start to build those relationships with your prospects and individuals. And what that will do is that will instill trust because people only buy from companies that they trust. And when they trust you, they will be more apt to buy from you. And if you buy from you and you continue to show them the love, so you say thank you, but you don't stop there. Maybe you say thank you. And you know what? Here's a blog article I think you might be interested in reading because it pertains to whatever you just bought from us or it pertains to your industry. For instance, we have a newsletter right now that we've even segmented by specific industries so that it can be about food and beverage or it can be about pharmaceutical. Because you know what? A pharmaceutical executive doesn't want to hear about the food and beverage industry. They all have way too much on their minds dealing with their particular industry that you've got to segment it out. So with doing this, I just saw I got a comment here from Stephen. So great to see you. Glad you're listening in. And just to finish up, it's all about relationship building. You have to be building these relationships with people you have to get to know them, both on the basic demographic level, but also understanding them and their challenges. And the best way to do that is, like I said, monitor social media. You can go to conferences. The other thing you can do is ask your customers. You know, ask your existing customers, like, what are you dealing with right now? Is there a topic that's hot that I should know about? Is there something I can help people out with? And not only what that does is it shows the customers that you have currently that you do care, that you're, you're always willing to evolve and grow to help serve them, but it's also going to help you go out and get new prospects. Well, I hope you all found this to be helpful. Like I said, relationship building is the new marketing. Gone are those days of the mass promotions out to everyone. You might get a few sales, but they'll probably be mediocre. And will those people be back next year? Probably not, because if anything, they're probably searching price. And you can't do that argument all the time about price. You've got to build value, and value is building a relationship. So join me next week where we'll uncover another B2B marketing tactic. And I thank you all for watching today. Have a great day. Bye.